this weekend we're doing uh, something just a little different. It's been said that it's easy to sit up and take notice, but what is far more difficult is actually getting up and taking action. Uh, before we continue with our U Count celebration, we want to take a, a moment to thank somebody who got up and took action 13 years ago. Bonnie Northrup, the founder and executive director of U Count, came before us as the Timberline Church family 13 years ago and cast a vision uh, to let us know that together we could make a difference in our world in the fight against human trafficking, this scourge of modern day slavery. And over the last 13 years, Bonnie, as the visionary leader of the campaign, it included fundraising, partnership development, education. Bonnie gathered us and brought us along uh, into and with the vision. Now, I know that Bonnie would be very quick to say in response to these words that she has had a great team, and that's actually really true, but we want to say, Bonnie, you have been a great visionary leader and you have made this happen. Later in the service, we're going to be hearing about uh, some of the things that have happened under Bonnie's leadership. Uh, Bonnie has stepped down as executive director of UCount and Greg and Vicky Dix are now co-executive directors and we'll be hearing from them uh, later in the service. But what we want to say this, Bonnie, you set the foundation you built the organization and you brought it to a point, key in leadership, where it can actually thrive and continue uh, without you actually leading it. But we want to declare publicly that we are convinced that your legacy will live on as uh, past victims and future victims of trafficking are liberated, as volunteers experience the joy of participating, as we experience the joy of giving and praying. And so on behalf of them and on behalf of us, we want to say a massive thank you. And we absolutely insist that you stand, please, that we can recognize you in all of your efforts. Let's say thank you. And uh, you probably noticed that Bonnie sat down rather quickly because this is the last thing she would have wanted, but this is entirely appropriate, we feel. Thank you. Well, our theme, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, is let there be light. And it seems like a long time ago, it's actually just four weeks ago, that we were decorating our homes with lights and dragging trees in and putting lights on them. And uh, we had a wonderful Christmas. Our kids and grandkids came out from England and we had food and jigsaw puzzles and food and food. And it was a beautiful, chaotic time. But uh, this is kind of personal. I'm a bit embarrassed about it. But we did have a bit of, bit of an issue with one family member who... Um, it's awkward to say this, but just wouldn't cooperate and uh, refused to empty the dishwasher when I asked her. And, and frankly, a lot of the time, just bluntly ignored me. And I've obviously got a bit of an issue with this family member. Her name is Alexa, and um, I would uh, frequently issue commands. Uh, and I thought it was really cool because, you know, we got the Christmas tree and the lights, and normally every morning I have to crawl under the Christmas tree and, you know, get those branches... It messes up this carefully planned hairstyle and, and uh, switch the lights on. So I thought, this year, I'm going to get a smart plug and I'm going to connect the tree lights to the smart plug. I'm going to connect the smart plug to Alexa so that every morning I can walk out and I can say, Alexa, turn the lights on. Frankly, sometimes she did. Mostly, she didn't. The very first words that God says in Scripture in human history is let there be light. And that brings us to that first point. Why? Well, light brings life. Light brings life. Let there be light. Light is so powerful. It travels 
I'm sure you know, at 186,000 miles per second in a vacuum, it takes one and a quarter seconds for light to get from the earth to the moon. Light can penetrate into the dark ocean, 262 feet. It's such a powerful force. And right at the start, God said, let there be light, the first thing. Genesis 1, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. And then when we come over into the New Testament, the coming of Jesus, we have a new Genesis, a new beginning of the formation of a new creation people. And we read again about light. John 1, 4, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Once again, the theme is picked up when Jesus begins his preaching ministry. It's as if the light goes on, and we read in Matthew 4, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And then when you go over into the future, to Revelation 21, it says Revelation 1 in your bulletin, my typo, nobody else's, we see this theme of light. I did not see a temple in the city, Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. So from the beginning to the end of the Bible, we have this amazing theme of light. But but here's the challenge. And here's the reason why our You Count campaign is so very important. And that is this. Darkness has its attractions. Darkness has its attractions. Look at John 3. It speaks of our humanity. It says this. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Some years ago, Kay and I were invited to go and speak at a Presbyterian church in the Caribbean. And when this invitation arrived, I I said to Kay, honey, we need to seriously consider this invitation to go to the Caribbean and to suffer for the gospel (laughs) in this manner. I said, no, no, um, let's not rush. We need to set aside a time of prayer and fasting before we give a response. And so we did. We set aside uh, three seconds for that and then said yes. And we're out there and having a wonderful time with this church and on the beach. And one night we went back to the house where we were staying and I flipped on the light and this humongous cockroach, this flying cockroach, the size of a B-52 bomber. (laughs) That's my impersonation of a cockroach. I've been working on that all week. Thank you so much, sir. Um, You can come with me everywhere I go. This thing this thing popped up and it's hovering and suddenly it, it is, I could see it in its eyes. I think they have eyes. It's sort of, do they have eyes? Oh, that's good. Uh, it, it flew straight at me. It's like, I see an Englishman, lunch. I wish I'd have had a tennis racket just to return the serve. That would have been awesome. But what I learned, because I researched later, because I'm weird, the cockroach has negative phototaxis. Remember this, you can tell your friends over lunch. It will impress them. What does that mean? It means that they love darkness rather than light. They hate light. There are many bugs, we know this in Colorado, that enjoy the light, and they, they come to visit during summer. But the cockroach doesn't. It hates the light. Forgive me, But there's something about our humanity which is a bit like that big bug. Because there's a battle, you see. There's something in us that is attracted to darkness rather than light. John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness. But then it says this, and the darkness has not overcome it. What's that about? It's about a battle between good and evil, light and darkness. And part of that battle is the ongoing battle against human trafficking. What is, how can humans be trafficked? You're thinking, we don't see people wandering around in chains. Well, no, we don't, but there are chains, but they are not visible. They are chains of threat. 
of intimidation. We'll take your passport away. We'll give you a passport. If you want somewhere to live, you will do this. Trafficking is everywhere. What is it? It's to be deceived or taken against your will, bought, sold, or transported into slavery. It can be for sexual exploitation, forced begging, horrifyingly sacrificial worship, or the removal of human organs as child brides, sometimes in sweatshops, sometimes found in circuses, farm labor, domestic servitude. And we look at this huge Goliath, this giant of human trafficking. Believe me, we'll hear more about it later. And our temptation is to throw up our hands and say, what, what, what can we do? They need to take care of it, whoever they are. We can despair. Dominic Crosland said this, there is no lighthouse keeper, there is no lighthouse, there is no dry land. There are only people living on rafts made of their own imaginations. And there is the sea, words of despair, words of hopelessness. There is no light and he is completely wrong. He is completely wrong. Because there is hope and there is possibility. It brings us to our third point, and that is that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Our Jewish friends during Jesus' time used to have a number of feasts and festivals where the whole nation would gather um, in Jerusalem and uh, a great ceremony would take place, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, it was a beautiful time when all of the hills around Jerusalem for the whole week would be lit up by huge beacons, like a massive circle of light. Um, every night, uh, women and men and children with an orchestra playing, would dance with torches. And on the final evening, uh, a candlestick, a menorah, two of them, 75 feet high, imagine that, in the court of the women in the temple, they would light these, uh, these lights, and it was said that you could see the whole of the city because it was bathed in light. It was said that you could see Jerusalem all the way from Galilee because of this beautiful light. And it was on that day that we read these words, John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'm using on screen to help me with my message. Jesus used the entire city of Jerusalem as a sermon illustration. As everyone is thrilled with the lights, he's saying, I'm the light of the world. Either unbelievably wonderful and revolutionary, or let's face it, totally preposterous. And as followers of Jesus, we believe the former. We believe that everyone needs that light. That without Jesus, there is darkness. But with him, there is light and hope. That's true for the respectable so-called church-going person. It's true for the person who has messed up beyond measure. In preparation for this weekend, uh, one of our leadership team um, yesterday was in prayer and felt like God spoke to her and said that this weekend there would be someone here in these services who is involved in trafficking as a trafficker and had this sense that God was saying to her that this person was showing up this weekend sick and lost and without hope and I'm here to announce that whether that is you or whether you're just that nice, respectable, suburban person just doing life by yourself, I'm here to announce that Jesus is the light and there is hope and life does not have to continue on the trajectory that it currently runs. And I'm not talking about religion. Religion is boring. I'm talking about Jesus, the light of the world. But there's implications not only about choosing to follow him, but as followers of the light of the world, becoming a light bearer yourself. And that brings us to this last point. We are all called to be, we're all called to be light bearers. And systematically, by giving, by prayer, by partnership, we're turning the light on. We're called to be light bearers, and that's consistent with scripture. 
During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke some remarkable words. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world, he said to the crowd. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. A few weeks ago, I stood on the Mount of Beatitudes where Jesus delivered those words. And I realized that down past the Sea of Galilee, there was a group of separatists. They were known as the Essenes back then, 2,000 years ago. The Essenes. They were like monks. They'd withdrawn from society, and they lived by the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, the Salt Sea, and they called themselves the Sons of Light. Do you see the connection? This community, the Sons of Light, living by the Salt Sea. Jesus is using another sermon illustration, but he's turning it all around, and he's saying, no, no, not by withdrawing from the world, but rather by engaging with it positively. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. I think it's so important for us to understand that all of this you count work, it's not just good work. Nice people are doing nice things. It's God work. Two weeks ago, I was preparing this message here in my office and... Uh, uh, I'm preparing a message on darkness and light, and my computer, ding, announced that I have had an email. Are you like me? Like, you're like Pavlov's dogs, you know. When, when the computer announces there's an email, it's like, who's, who's that from? Is, is that Harry and Meghan again, you know? What, what, what is that? And uh, so I, I, I went to the email, and it was from a man from England who had been at a conference that I was speaking at 10 years ago, and he decided to write and thank me for the sermon. He waited 10 years, that's rude. <laughs> but here's the thing, he said some nice things, and then at the end of his email he said, I just felt I should include this poem, this song that I've written. It's called Darkness and Light. While I'm preparing this message, 10 years after he heard me. He decided to send that email. I mean, that made my hair stand, stand on, well, it always stands on end, but <laughs> here's the poem. And so the darkness falls and the elusiveness of sleep sends the mind reeling down dark alleys of a life half-lived, strewn with the debris of potential unrealized amid dark shadows cast by dreams unfulfilled. You stumble on through puddles of great sadness, from the tears of love unknown, solitary, alone, fear lying in your belly, fear of everything, fear of nothing, fear of the darkness enveloping, consuming, devouring your very soul, your eyes ever searching for one small moment, one instant, one tiny glimmer of light, light, beautiful light, invading the dark, drying the puddles, lighting the way, healing, uniting, embracing, empowering, illuminating, bringing perspective, a path to follow, the alley left behind, fellow travelers once unseen, now revealed, loneliness defeated, and fear, fear burnt away as darkness, unable to stand in the light, slinks away to the corners of your mind to await, to await its next defeat. This is not just good work. It's God work defeating the darkness. Well, before I finish, um, I think I've got this uh, Alexa thing down now. So, um, uh, Alexa, uh, turn the lights up. <laughs> I'd say that went rather well. Thanks, Timberline, because when you heard the call, let there be light, you responded. Let's keep doing it because as we do, as we pray, as we give, as we partner, darkness will be defeated and lives will be changed. The Lord led me to the red light district of Mumbai. There I saw a lot of children in the street. Two of the girls said to me, take us all out of this hell, otherwise we will 
all end up like our mothers. Well, you know, I, I seen like uh, my own daughters there. I said, what you you do when you meet, when you, you somebody take your daughters and you don't wait for United Nations or others to come to help you. You want to, you know, go and take your daughters from there. and sit with them and talk to them. I get an opportunity to pray for them. You're going to like a, some kind of, you know, dungeon, really dark place. That's where I saw uh, Sumi under the, you know, bed. The Sumi was like that, you know, just scared and lying, in, you know, up naked there. I said, she doesn't have anybody. I have a home I can take her to. I remember taking Sumi from that place, carrying her to my jeep. And she said, the house is moving. She said, the house is moving. So she lived most of her life in that dark room. They were all born and brought there, Sony, Sumi. Priya and Pinky. So when we got them, all of them very small age. I remember taking them in the bus all together. They getting out of the bus, seeing their house, they were jumping. Before they were just jumping up and down, up and down and so happy just out of that hell to a home where, you know, they can just see their dates so they are home, our home. I'm blessed to have good father like uncle. When he brought me here, I was such an innocent girl, but because of him, I have built that confidence in my life. He always makes sure that he can give us that love, and today, we don't miss that uh, love of father. Today, he has completed me with the love of father, so I'm blessed with him. Whatever I am today, it's all because of this Project Rescue. Whatever I needed, they have provided me everything. They are helping me to pursue my dreams, and it gave me hope for bright future. And all of them graduated. Priya, she's uh, doing a second year MBA. Sony, she finished her graduation and she's doing a master in arts. Pingy is also graduated and she's working also in a company. And Sumi graduated and she's working as an executive in a company. And their heart is what we have taught them not only they, the God has rescued them, has saved them from these places, not only for their own life, but through them God wants to save many, many others, raising them to be leaders for India. All I can say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Yeah, so take, take a minute and just reflect on that video. It is extremely powerful and touching. 
We had plans today. We were going to walk up on the stage, and Sumi was going to be standing next to us. Unfortunately, we ran into some visa issues, so she couldn't be here. But she wanted to be here in person and look into your eyes and to tell you thank you on behalf of herself, those three other girls, and 75 women that all of you have helped send to school and to get an education. This weekend, the theme of you seen has been Let There Be Light. And I thought the sermon and the dance did a great job of communicating the fact that there is a light that does overcome darkness. There is hope. There is hope for people that are being trafficked. And that is the driving force behind the mission of UCount and its tireless volunteers. UCount, as you've heard, has been fighting global and local sex trafficking through prevention, awareness, and rescue for the last 13 years. I'm proud to say that we have raised and donated over $2 million to help victims fight the crime and create awareness through some amazing frontline organizations and partners around the world. In addition, we've sold $700,000 of products made by survivors to help bring back dignity, hope, and sustainability to their lives. Rich and Becky Dixon, I should mention, also lead a ministry here at Timberline called Freedom the Freedom Tour, which is a cycling ministry that since 2013, 600 riders, get this, have ridden over 70,000 miles, raising $223,000 to help kids live in a home just like you saw uh, by Project Rescue in New Delhi. So if you're a cyclist, I encourage you to go back, and there's a table in the mall where you can get connected and you can take something that you love doing and you can take that and what they like to say, make your miles matter by helping a kid who's impacted in trafficking. The reality is this fight is far from over. Today, experts forecast that upwards of 40 million people are impacted by modern day slavery. 13 years ago, when UCount began, one of its primary purposes was to create awareness that this crime, this crime was happening in various places around the world. What we know today is that this just doesn't happen in India or in Spain or maybe just even in large U.S. cities, but it's happening right here in Fort Collins and in northern Colorado. Before you leave today, we have a table in the back, and I want you to stop by and pick up a sheet, an infographics that has some local statistics on it that communicate what's happening right here in our community. In it, you will see that the FBI's Innocence Lost Task Force team has rescued 612 minors in the Denver and Northern Colorado area, about 100 a year, that have been trafficked. And what we know to be true is this crime is a very underreported, hard to see crime, and so the victims far exceed that already staggering number. We have data as recently as this fall that says that the city in Colorado with the highest demand for commercial sex is in fact Fort Collins. Poudre Steel Districts recently announced, you might have seen it, that they're seeing one of the highest populations in their history at 1,175 of homeless students that are all, being, uh, that are all vulnerable and of being trafficked while they try and find forms of shelter, food, and security. You see, UCount believes it's all of our responsibility, especially the church, right, that those who are most vulnerable in our community are safe, and that if anybody believes that they can prey upon them are caught and held accountable for their crimes. So in 2020, we are going to continue all of our fight. It is truly all of our fight. It's not just you counts. It's your fight as well. It's your kids. It's your neighbors. We're going to do this at a global, but yes, at a local level, while we continue to focus at that micro level of the one girl or the one boy or the one girl that is currently being trafficked and needs to know that there is light and there is hope. At the same time, we're going to be looking at the macro level of how do we disrupt the crime and the business around human trafficking. We're going to do that through intelligence-led prevention, working alongside law enforcement, financial institution, and some amazing other organizations that are in this fight, many of them that are back in a row back there that I'm so thankful that they're here. Um, 
that we all believe we're going to continue this fight, that one day we will see modern day slavery abolished forever. So with that said, let's have Vicki tell us a little bit about our partners and projects for 2020. Well, we support some amazing frontline organizations globally and locally, and I'm excited to tell you about them. So Project Rescue, they are our largest partner and they have been with us since the very beginning. And last year, if you were here, you got to hear about Project Rescue Spain. Well, we're gonna continue to invest with them and when they were here, they told you we were, they were in two cities. I'm so pleased to tell you that today they're now in five cities. They have four safe homes, and they're looking to expand into Spanish colonies in North Africa. We're also going to support Stop the Traffic. They focus on prevention and disrupting the global trafficking business. And through intelligence, they're able to discover trafficking routes, and hotspots, and then create social media campaigns to inform at-risk individuals. They have run 25 campaigns across Africa, Europe, and North America, and they have reached more than 6 million people. We want to support that global effort as well as run our own campaign one day right here in northern Colorado. We're also going to continue supporting Guatemala Loom Project. This is run by our very own Diane Herman. Loom provides jobs and skills training to at-risk and traffic survivors in Guatemala. And today you can purchase product made by these women out in our marketplace. You can also help us by supporting our Dream Tea College Scholarship Fund by purchasing a U-Count t-shirt like the one that Greg is wearing. Just through you purchasing t-shirts, we have provided 75 college scholarships. And Sumi and those three girls have benefited because you guys purchased t-shirts. So a new project for us this year is the EPIC project. EPIC looks at disrupting the purchase of commercial sex by communicating with the buyer at the point of purchase. They're in, then able to take this information and provide it to law enforcement. And they're currently in 11 cities and we are looking to launch an expansion of them right here in Fort Collins. And then I want to tell you, we also love supporting Free Our Girls, which is now called Sparrow's Landing. This is led by our, our um, Megan Lundstrom, she is, um, I'm so sorry. Anyway, just love Megan. She just has such an impact on our community. But um, it's a Northern Colorado organization. It's led by her. She's um, so wonderful. That organization provides care packages and kind notes to exploited women. They educate the um, community on the issue of human trafficking. And they also provide career and financial literacy programs to survivors. Now I want to let you know that in 2020, we are going to take more focus and we're going to be intentional at combating this crime right here in Northern Colorado. And we've been doing that by meeting with city leaders, our law enforcement, we've been talking to the Fort Collins PD, the Sheriff's Office, and the FBI. Now that I've told you about what we support, I want to let you know about some upcoming events. On Monday night, we will be showing the film Boys. This is a documentary that shines light on the fact that males are also victims of this crime. And then on February 6th, we are a supporter of the Northern Colorado Human Trafficking Symposium at Colorado State and University. I encourage you to attend to hear industry experts speak as well as survivors. And then on February 9th, we will be holding a training right here at Timberline. Here, come here where you can learn more information about human trafficking or if you want to become a U-Count volunteer. Now, Lisa's going to come tell you how you can get involved right now. Wow, that is a lot that we have ahead of us to do together. If you have any questions or need to know any more information, please come and talk to us in the back in the information area because we'd love to answer your questions and get you involved. You can fight human trafficking by drinking coffee. Our cafe here at Timberline serves Rescue Freedom Blend in every cup and every uh, pound of coffee you purchase goes towards fighting human trafficking. So that's a great way to get involved. If you haven't seen the shop out there, we brought all of our products here, the marketplace. It is so full of amazing items that you haven't seen yet. We have a new partner in Jaipur with some home goods. We have our quilts, don't forget to look up, amazing quilts. We're continuing the clothing line in Mumbai. Vicky's wearing one of the blouses, I've got a kimono on. Come check it out because every purchase counts. 
This is a great way to help provide that dignity and hope for that woman who has been rescued out of um, the situation that she's in. This, this is an easy way to do it because you get to have some fun things to wear and you can tell your friends about it. We're working really hard to make this supply chain very sustainable and grow and expand so that we can help more women. So thank you. Timberline, you have been our best consumers to help us fight human trafficking. So thank you so much. We're gonna watch a video here. You can hear all the stats of what we've done up to now and also some thank yous from our partners and our volunteers. Thank you, Timberline. UCAT has been fighting global and local sex trafficking for 13 years. Through the passionate efforts of our volunteers and our generous donors, lives of tragedy, fear, and abuse have been transformed into lives of hope, dignity, and freedom. $700,000 was donated to Calcutta, India, and 57 women and children have a place to call home where they are safe and receive care and support. 1,600 women and children receive care and education at the Red Light District Outreach Center. Over $125,000 was donated in Calcutta, India, where 28 women are now employed and are learning a new trade. Over $140,000 was donated to a Red Light District Outreach Center in New Delhi, India. At this center, more than 5,000 women have been ministered to, and over 2,000 women have received medical attention. $500,000 was raised for Spain. Two safe homes were purchased where today 43 women are safe, receiving counseling, getting an education, and have access to an attorney to acquire their papers and passports for their new life ahead. Also, 650 women who are still being trafficked have been and are being ministered to through an outreach program. Shoppers have spent over $100,000 in t-shirts for our Dream Tea College Scholarship Fund. And 75 women in India have received scholarships to attend a university or an institution of higher education. $60,000 has been given for local training of over 3,000 youth, 1,250 professionals, and 2,250 community citizens. Four community response teams have been launched in Larimer and Weld County alone, and 20 emergency bags have been handed out to rescued women in Fort Collins. $7,000 was used to develop encoded gifts with an 800 hotline number, and these were given to over 1,000 at-risk and trafficked women. $75,000 was raised for Sarah's Home, a residential home for minors in Colorado, where five teenage girls live today and are receiving care, counseling, and are working towards their high school diploma. More than $25,000 has been given to Free Our Girls in Northern Colorado who are walking alongside 1,600 current and active trafficked women in the U.S. and Canada. And 10 survivors have received financial assistance towards their college education. Shoppers have purchased over $700,000 in product made by at-risk women and survivors of sex trafficking. Over 90 women have learned a new trade and now live a life with dignity and hope. On behalf of these women and children, we want to say thank you, Timberline, for changing lives and helping us implement our vision. Without your contributions, none of this would have been possible. And we have some special thank yous from frontline workers around the globe who have benefited from your generosity. Thank you, you count. Thanks, you count. Thank you, you count. Thank you, you count. Thank you so much for all your prayerful support all these years. None of us can do anything without each other. Thank you, you count, for letting Stop the Traffic work with you, partner with you, and for your generosity. You've done amazing things to help us do things in the past two years. We're looking forward to the next two. Exciting things, exciting plans, exciting future. Looking to the future? Join us in our fight against human trafficking.